So to cap off an incredibly tough week for Microsoft, they are once again in legal trouble with the FTC. We all know that Microsoft recently acquired Activision Blizzard successfully, and the FTC lost out in its initial attempt to block the deal. However, they are back for round two, and they have called into question Microsoft's recent decision to let go of 1,900 staff across the company, including staff at Activision Blizzard. So in today's video, I want to tell you everything you need to know about this latest legal drama. I'll try and pull up all my past legal legal knowledge, I used to be a lawyer, and then I'll go into my thoughts after that. So if you enjoyed this video, if you find it helpful, please like, subscribe if you're new, with notifications if that's possible, but let's get into the news. So as I mentioned, Microsoft did make redundant 1,900 staff across the company, and there were a lot of staff at Activision Blizzard that were let go as part of that decision. So recently, the FTC has actually filed an official complaint with the US Court of Appeals, and they're essentially alleging that Microsoft's recent round of layoffs has contradicted predicted their previous claims which they made to the court that Activision Blizzard would operate independently. I'm going to go through their full complaint so you know exactly what was said. I'm also going to go through Microsoft's response officially to that complaint and then I'll go into my thoughts. So this complaint from the FTC to the US Court of Appeals says the following. Quote, the Federal Trade Commission FTC writes to notify the court of Microsoft's publicly reported plan to eliminate 1,900 jobs in its video game division. This newly revealed information contradicts Microsoft's representations in this proceeding, which seeks to temporarily pause Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard pending the FTC's evaluation of the merger's antitrust merits. Microsoft represented to this court that the post-merger company will be structured and operated in a way that would readily enable Microsoft to divest any or all of the Activision businesses as robust market participants in the unlikely event that such a divestiture is ordered. Further, Microsoft argued that the principal public equity that would be served by an injunction to maintain the pre-merger status quo is not implicated by Microsoft's vertical acquisition of Activision, which Microsoft intends to operate as a limited integration studio. Microsoft claimed that the public equity favoring an injunction is more acutely implicated in horizontal mergers, where competing entities integrate their operations and in the process often eliminate redundancies. Microsoft's recently reported plan to eliminate 1,900 jobs in its video game division, including in its newly acquired Activision unit, contradicts the foregoing representations it made to this court. Specifically, Microsoft reportedly has stated that the layoffs were part of an execution plan that would reduce areas of overlap between Microsoft and Activision, which is inconsistent with Microsoft's suggestion to this court that the two companies will operate independently post-merger. Moreover, the reported elimination of thousands of jobs jobs undermines the FTC's ability to order effective relief should the pending administrative proceeding result in a determination that Microsoft's acquisition of Activision violated Section 7 of the Clayton Act. The reported layoffs thus underscore the FTC's need for injunctive relief pending completion of the administrative proceeding. Now let's cover Microsoft's official response to this complaint. Quote, nothing in the FTC's February 7, 2024 letter undermines the primary reason for affirmance, the FTC's failure to raise a serious question as to whether Microsoft is likely to foreclose competition in the alleged console, subscription, or cloud markets. Specifically, the FTC failed to establish at trial that Microsoft has both the ability and incentive to withhold Call of Duty or that any withholding would harm competition. On this front, the post-merger developments further weaken the FTC's case, including Sony signing an agreement guaranteeing it access to Call of Duty on multiple platforms, and Activision's games appearing on cloud gaming providers like NVIDIA. These are the precise kind of output expanding developments that Judge Corley found were unlikely to occur absent the merger, including based on testimony from the FTC's own expert. While the court need not reach the equities to affirm, the FTC's letter provides no basis for undercutting Judge Corley's findings. First, the FTC failed in both the district court and this court to articulate any harm from the merger's closing, and thus has forfeited any argument on this front. Moreover, the FTC's factual assertions are incomplete and misleading. Consistent with broader trends in the gaming industry, Activision was already planning on eliminating a significant number of jobs while still operating as an independent company. The recent announcement thus cannot be attributed fully to the merger. More important, Microsoft continues to fully stand behind its representations to this court. To be clear, while some 
some overlap was identified and some jobs were eliminated, Microsoft has structured and is operating the purse merger company in a way that will readily enable it to divest any or all of the Activision businesses as robust market participants in the unlikely event that a divestiture is ultimately ordered. This is precisely what Microsoft represented previously. Moreover, Microsoft has issued statements to different media outlets, including GameSpot, and I will link those in the description below, in an attempt to try and further bolster its case when it comes to these redundancies. So this is what they say, quote, in continuing its opposition to the deal, the FTC ignores the reality that the deal itself has substantially changed, a representative said. Since the FTC lost in court last July, Microsoft was required by the UK Competition Authority to restructure the acquisition globally and therefore did not acquire the cloud streaming rights to Activision Blizzard games in the United States. Additionally, Sony and Microsoft signed a binding agreement to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation on even better terms than Sony had before. So what I want to do now in simple non-legal terms is explain what the FTC's arguments are, what Microsoft's arguments are in response, and ultimately try and come to a conclusion in terms of whether I believe this case is going anywhere. Is Microsoft ever going to be ordered by a court or a judge to actually unacquire Activision Blizzard in the future? So effectively, the FTC is saying that by making Activision Blizzard staff redundant, if a court were to ever rule that Microsoft must unacquire the company, Activision Blizzard essentially couldn't be returned to its original state. Also, Microsoft did argue at some point that an injunction shouldn't be granted as Activision Blizzard would be operating as a limited integration studio within Microsoft, similarly to Zenimax and Bethesda, mind you. And therefore, there wouldn't be any risk to the principles of public equity. So, in doing the redundancies, Microsoft has technically contradicted itself, especially when it said that the layoffs were intended to reduce areas of overlap between Microsoft and Activision. Specifically, this is what they said when they let go their staff. This was an internal email that was leaked, not publicly, but this is what Phil Spencer said to staff in light of the redundancies. Quote, it's been a little over three months since the Activision Blizzard and King teams joined Microsoft. As we move forward in 2024, the leadership of Microsoft Gaming and Activision Blizzard is committed to aligning on a strategy and an execution plan with a sustainable cost structure that will support the whole of our growing business. Together, we've set priorities, identified areas of overlap, that's the key phrase, and ensured that we're all aligned on the best opportunities for growth. As part of this process, we have made the painful decision to reduce the size of our gaming workforce by approximately 1,900 roles out of the 22,000 people on our team. So what the FTC is now saying is that it's impossible for them to order any effective relief since all these people are out of a job. You can't undo this thing that Microsoft has done, right? Now let's go to Xbox's or Microsoft's argument. What are they saying in response? What they are saying is that the FTC has still failed to outline the reasons as to why this acquisition would actually be anti-competitive in the first place, whether in the console, subscription, or the cloud markets. And this is especially so now as Microsoft has signed those binding deals with Sony, which guarantees that company access to Call of Duty on multiple platforms. And of course, they've signed similar deals with the likes of Nvidia and also Nintendo as well. And the FTC clearly on a number of occasions has already failed in court to specify the actual harm that would be caused by these acquisitions closing. Also, Activision, according to Microsoft, was already planning on doing its own redundancy, whether they were acquired by Microsoft or not. So Microsoft's redundancy cannot be fully attributed to this acquisition. And finally, Microsoft says it stands by the fact that it is still ready to divest any and all of Activision's businesses if they were ordered to do so. So what do I think about this crazy, incredibly complex situation? First, I want to start off by saying, I never personally believed that this acquisition was anti-competitive in the first place, right? When Microsoft intended to acquire Activision Blizzard and the FTC had its issues and the UK's authority had its issues, I always believed in some capacity this deal would be closed because I did not believe it fundamentally harmed competition in the video games industry. The FTC and especially the UK authority had a very narrow minded view of what the video games industry was. They specifically looked at the console business and in the console business, yes, Yes, Microsoft is a much bigger player, right? They are one of the big three when it comes to video game companies that actually have consoles. However, Microsoft's argument always was, you can't have that narrow view of the video games industry. You need to be broader than that and, and think how big the video games industry actually is. And when you look at it from that perspective, Tencent, Sony, and Apple were all still ahead of Microsoft when it came specifically to gaming revenues before the acquisition, right? Microsoft was firmly in that number four spot. And then even after acquiring Activision Blizzard, Microsoft are still only second. Tencent is still ahead of the pack in the tune of millions and millions of 
millions of dollars. They are so far ahead of the competition when it comes to gaming revenues. And that is a big reason, not the only reason, but the big reason why I believe that this deal was not anti-competitive. This wasn't a case of the number one company looking to acquire the number two or three or four company, right? This was the number four company looking to acquire someone else lower on the totem pole. Yes, Activision Blizzard are huge, they were massive, but still they didn't compete with the likes of Tencent or Apple or Sony or Microsoft itself. So that was a big reason I didn't believe that this deal was actually anti-competitive. It's such a big threshold to clear in order to tell someone, no, you can't acquire this company. And I just didn't believe the FTC was convincing enough in its argument. But even so, Microsoft clearly now, and maybe in the light of the FTC being so hard asses about this, but Microsoft hasn't looked to restrict competition, right? They haven't looked to keep all these games and IP that they've acquired from Activision Blizzard just to Xbox consoles to the exclusion of PlayStation. As Microsoft has said, they did sign deals with PlayStation or Sony when it came to Call of Duty. They've signed deals with Nvidia. They've signed deals with Nintendo. If anything, if you believe all these recent rumors, they are looking to move more of its first party Xbox games to other platforms. They're looking to become much more third party. So, is that anti-competitive? No, it's actually quite the opposite. However, 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 I will say, I believe there is some merit to what the FTC is saying. Enough merit at least that I believe the court should hear its arguments in a court of law and simply should not just dismiss it now. I don't believe the case is actually that weak because Microsoft has a little bit contradicted itself when it comes to these redundancies. They did say in court that Activision Blizzard would be a limited integration studio and that they'll be operating independently. And then after the deal closed, they let go of all those staff. Now, they tried to sell it differently. They tried to say, no, this wasn't just our decision. Microsoft worked together with Activision Blizzard and we both decided that we would let go of 1900 staff, right? That's how they tried to sell it in the internal email. But the power structure clearly is Microsoft here, Activision Blizzard here. I don't believe that they were operating at completely level terms. Microsoft ultimately still hold, held all the cards and they could decide whether Activision Blizzard staff were getting made redundant or not. Especially with Bobby Kotick no longer being there. Who was leading Activision Blizzard in those negotiations with Microsoft, right? I believe this was firmly a Microsoft or Xbox decision. So I believe that to an extent they have contradicted themselves a little bit. Although I will say to try and play devil's advocate here, I actually do believe Microsoft when they say that Activision Blizzard was probably arranging its own redundancies, whether or not they were going to be acquired by Microsoft successfully. And therefore you can't fully attribute those redundancies to the acquisition itself absolutely Activision Blizzard were going to make staff redundant. For sure they were. Look at what's happened in the games industry in the past year. Heck, look at what's happened in the past month in 2024 alone. We've seen thousands, thousands of people being made redundant across the video games industry. Do we really think Activision Blizzard wouldn't have done the same? Do we really think they would have been any different? Of course that's what they were planning. And you know what? They probably would have made even more staff redundant if they weren't acquired because they would have lost out on tens of billions of dollars. Think back to Embracer Group. Embracer Group acquired a bunch of different companies like Gearbox and others. And recently they lost out on this $2 billion Saudi deal, right? Specifically, they said because of that, we're going to be down scaling and making redundant a bunch of stuff because they lost out on all that money. They were foreseeing this huge influx of cash and therefore they justified hirings around that. And when they lost out on that investment, they decided to make stuff redundant. If Activision Blizzard lost out on literally $70 billion, do we think they would have just left the staff numbers the same? Of course they wouldn't. Let's be real here. So because of that, I actually think Microsoft has a convincing case there. But overall, do I actually think this is going to lead anywhere? No, I don't. I think the FTC's case is pretty weak. I think it's not going anywhere. The deal is done. I think they need to move on. They should have bigger fish to fry and let's just get on with our lives. But anyways, let me know what you think in the comments below about this video. And until next time, this has been the Lone Vault Wanderer. Please take care of yourselves and would you kindly keep fighting the good fight.